Hi, I know that kids with autism can thrive and we want to show you a way to help your kids thrive. My name's Michael. I work at Amazing Skills. This is my friend, Sherry-Ann. Hey, I'm Sherry-Ann. I work at Amazing Skills and I just love seeing children thrive and grow. Yeah. And today we're going to show you what, um, what it is about secret agent society that helps your child to get the hang of um, interpersonal relationships how we do friendships, how we keep friends and how we stay calm and emotionally, reg emotionally regulate because it's hard to keep friends if if you're losing it at your friends too often. Let me just share my screen. Sharon, you've been teaching Secret Agent Society for, I don't know, 100 kids. What do you love about Secret Agent Society? I love that it really breaks down the steps of emotional regulation and, and it really highlights how important it is to have emotional regulation down pat and how to break down those steps of having a conversation or having a social interaction um, so that there's nothing hiding for our kids. It's all out in plain view and the secrets are all disarmed straight away. Yeah, that's good. And, and I guess around emotional regulation, um, like which let's be honest, it's just technical terms for how we stay calm and how we choose to be brave when we're not necessarily feeling comfortable um, as we're growing our skills. Um, basically, kids who, who are constantly on edge usually just need a few go-to techniques, and Secret Agent Society definitely gives that. And Sherry, and I love that you love that, because what I love about Secret Agent Society is the other side of it, which is the, the friendship skills stuff. Okay, so let's have a look. So Secret Agent Society is... Um, 11 sessions and each session is quite long um, and what we do is we take difficult things your child would learn at their OT or their speechy or at their psych and actually just turn into a game your child becomes a secret agent okay so I'm just scrolling down this page here session one session two all the way and we're just going to walk you through the content because some of you can start to show your kids the content at home just in conversations, whether or not you do Secret Agent Society. All right, so the first one, session one is learning to read people. Now, this is a really fun one because, and it's an important one, because you can't build rapport with people if you can't read what's going on their face. Okay, Sherry, and what goes through your head when I say, I love session one, I love that we can equip kids with those skills. What, what, what jumps out at you about session one? Session one's a lot of fun. We start to disarm the um, the secrets, I suppose, of what's happening in um, in other people. When I'm in interaction in an interaction, what what are they thinking? You know, what one of the questions we often ask is, "What are you thinking? What are you thinking?" And we start to teach our kids that when we look at a person's facial expression and we look at their body language and we listen to their tone of voice, we can start to paint a picture of what they're thinking without having to ask what they're thinking. That's right. Sorry, I spoke over you. What were you going to say? No, that's okay. It is helpful though to still ask that question, what are you thinking? Right. Um, just to make sure it's a good way of testing whether your perception of a situation is correct. Yeah. And, and, what we're trying to do here is demystify the whole, um, the whole, you know, reading people because a lot of your, a lot about like your neurotypical child or the child next door to you, they learn to read people's facial expressions from a young age. They don't need it explicitly explained, but for a, a lot of our kids on on the autism spectrum, that they, they're going to need us to break it down. Here's what this means, and here's what they do. Um, sorry, here's what we do when we see that facial expression. So. It's little things like um, if like negative surprise or shock. Sherry-Ann, show me your both shocked face. I'll do it at the same time. Okay. Usually mouth open, eyes wide. Let's do that again, Sherry-Ann. Uh, that's right. And, and it's like it, it, we break into a formula that kids can recognize. Or the formula for um, when someone's feeling proud of themselves is their chin is up. You know, they're smiling. You know, they're... That, chest goes out yeah shoulders back that's right and and we break into that formula so um yeah it, it's about making it so that it's like if i went to china i'd need someone to teach me chinese i'm not going to pick it up magically it's like when your child gets steps out into social world they'll, they'll need that um the other thing um session one does with helping us read people is it's like okay so i'm recognizing sherry Ann, like if, if i'm guessing sherry Ann, she looks relaxed she knows the content she's also a bit excited because she and i love making you know videos that help parents and and it's like I can read that but then what do I do next okay so if I'm reading she's happy that means I can have a conversation with her whereas if I was reading that Sherry Ann is feeling upset show me your best upset face Sherry Ann yeah that's right then 
my response would be to pull back a bit or maybe to ask, are you okay? Is there something you need? So we're teaching our kids um, to read people and then to know what's the next step. And we're breaking that into formulas that they can they can thrive and they can um, they can feel successful at. So, um, Sherian, and, and then what about, say, the voice? Because voice is also very helpful in being able to read people. You know, often our kids are really good at telling us what their teachers are feeling. They've become really good. They get a little bit of practice before they get here at reading their teachers. So that's a really good foundation for starting to talk about what happens when someone is feeling a little bit angry. You know, we know that we have, uh, there are four elements to our voice. There's our tone of voice. You know, is it a high sound? Sorry, that's pitch. I've made an error. Um, (laughs) That's okay. We all do that. (laughs) we've got pitch is it a high pitch or is it a low pitch often when someone's feeling really excited their pitch is going to be high um and and it's they might talk really fast they might have a higher speed when they're feeling a little bit angry or a little bit sad their pitch is going to completely change it's going to be completely different the speed at which they talk is going to be different depending on if they're feeling happy or sad and how loud or soft they talk is going to be completely different so we we talk about you know how loud or soft if someone's talking really loudly how do you, how do we think they're feeling yeah and it's like are, are they loud because they're excited are they loud because they're angry you know that sort of stuff um so there's 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 all these different elements and the truth is we never really know what someone else is thinking. Oh, another thing with um, tone of voice or description, listening to someone's voices is a lot of times the, our kids on the spectrum don't recognize when someone's making fun of them. Okay. So Sharon, I'd love you to make fun of my shirt for me just for a minute, just so I can demonstrate your voice. Shirt. Awesome. Okay. Like, can you like now make fun of like make a positive comment in a sarcastic tone actually is what i should have said i just love your glasses okay my glasses so i just love your glasses like your voice is doing that thing and we teach our kids to recognize sarcasm which is super powerful super helpful and the real goal of being able to read people and know what to do next is because that's that's how we build rapport that's how we build friendships let's have a look at the next one and obviously there's so much more to this you know but this is this is something that we do um session two so powerful we look at um how we handle our emotions and it's not so much that um a lot of kids think their emotions are a negative factor because every time someone's talking to them about their emotions it's in a negative context so we don't want to do that so we want to talk about happiness and anger and anxiety because they're three pretty extreme emotions and happiness makes it so that you know you we're not in trouble we're not talking about this because we're in trouble um sharon what do you love about session two i love that we get to disarm those negative connotations around anger and anxiety you know often our kids think that they look at mum and dad or they and, and my son does it too he looks at me and he thinks oh but mum doesn't show a lot of anger and when there's anger someone's often in trouble or something's something negative is going on around that rather than just thinking well anger is a feeling that we all have it's perfectly normal to feel angry and we have to process that feeling and use strategies that are going to help us to process that feeling in the most calm possible way yeah let's be brave um absolutely and so what i'm also thinking with that is the is that a lot of the time when kids are uh viewing their emotions as negative then they think they're bad like, i'm a bad person because i exploded it's like no i'm not a bad person because i exploded i just i didn't handle my emotions the way i wanted one in that moment because emotions are there to be harnessed and used and emotions are our friends so if i share this screen here um i mean what are some of the body signals that that we help kids to understand go with those emotions or, or how do you find that Little kids use that well for you, Sharon. Oh, look, our kids are often able to tell us when I feel really angry, I actually can't think clearly. You know, it's really hard to think. It's really hard to um, think, what am I going to do? They act before they're thinking. That's when we see uh, maybe our, our punching and our kicking. And, you know, they're often good at telling us, you know, when I'm really angry, I will punch and I will kick and I might shout and I have a lot of energy too. 
I have so much energy that I don't know what to do with and it's really, really hard and I feel hot and there are so many and I haven't, I haven't named them all because in, in a group, we often have, we have a group of four children in each session and in a group of four, all four children are going to feel completely different feelings in their body when they're angry. Yeah. And the same goes for anxiety too. They're going to feel completely anxiety manifests manifests itself differently in every single person. So there's no wrong answer here, which is so good because there's no, we can't be anxious about a wrong answer. There's, they're all, every answer that we get is right. And we can have really good open-ended conversations about those feelings. That's right. And we can make it fun because it's not about, you know, let's get our emotions fully regulated yesterday it's that's not the goal the goal is to be like right we're secret agents secret agents when things go wrong they've got to find a way to be able to be to stay calm until they're in in a situation where they can decompress a bit so it's like right if something goes really bad like let's imagine i'm at school and i drop my cup and it breaks inside i want to scream and run away and hide because i feel so terrible but at the time i need to actually go well I'm going to use my emotional um, gadgets that we, secret agent gadgets, like our oxygen regulator, which is, you know, a, a, a fun way of saying I want to breathe well, or my unhelpful thought zapper, which is a way of saying, going from saying, oh, I'm such an idiot to, oh, that was a mistake. You know, like I'm going to use those gadgets and then I'm going to stay as calm as I can. And then I'm going to go and, go and um, decompress after, after after that moment. I don't have to, I don't have to let my emotions own me. I get to choose what emotions I feel. Um, and with, with, um, with our younger kids, they're learning to recognize their body signals of how they're feeling. With our older kids, often they're learning to, um, they're a bit more subtle, like say they're, mar they're masking their whole life and not actually processing their emotions till they get in the car with mum on the way home and then they explode, you know? Um, so, so it's looking at, oh, how do I use my emotions to help me? My emotions are my friends. And, um, and yeah, like, and, and by doing it in terms of happiness, as well as anger and anxiety, it, it all starts to feel a bit more normal. Um, Sherry, let's have a look at uh, session three, which is, oh, some, some of those skills that we need to be able to handle our emotions. It's one thing to say, oh, we want to be brave and handle our emotions well, yeah, but it's a, it's a more important and more helpful thing to say, well, how do we do that? So, I mean, what jumps out at you about session three that you love, Sharon? Session three is a great backup because what when we've talked in session two, we've talked about low to medium levels of anger and we talk about everything as in degrees. You know, we don't just um, feel instantly infuriated. Uh, we, we will work up to that. There might be a series of situations happening and sometimes it looks like we're instantly infuriated, but often we find that's not the case. And what do we do when we have those really high levels of anger or anxiety? Knowing what to do in those situations is really tricky for our children. And so we, we unpack the fire engine gadget and the fire engine gadget is all about keeping our kids safe and us safe, but being able to let that anger out and get it out because there's no we can't bottle it up forever the more we bottle up something that's frustrated us or upset us the worse it's going to get so if we are able to let it out in a safe way and you know that safe way might be to go for a run it might be for my son it's jumping on the trampoline he loves to go and jump on that trampoline and get the energy out once the energy's out we can talk about it we can talk about what would we do differently next time what was what was it that upset you is it something I did? Because as parents, I upset my child all the time. What can I do differently? How can I help you so that we can process that feeling? And when they've come down and they're, they're a little bit calmer, then we can, we can work with them. Um, but the important key when something's upset us is to go back and do the thing that upset us, which is so hard. Yeah, it's um, tricky. Also, but that's on, session three. That's right. And, and on that, it's like, as parents, you you know, and you, you know that the the time to deal with an issue is probably not even that day. If there's been a really big issue while our child is heightened, we don't want to be um we don't want to be unpacking all that that day. Like wait till tomorrow when it's a bit easier to deal with. Also, I just want to show you something that's interesting, which is that um, Secret Agent Society is so much more in depth than what we're showing here. Just sharing my screen, um, because 
what we do is look, this is just a taste of what happens in that session. If you click on that button there, what happens? Um, you get to see the sort of stuff that we send out to your child's teacher or their psych that's just a lot more in depth, you know. Um, and we don't want to go into all that today, but Secret Agent Society is a very in depth program. And what Sharon and I are showing you is just the surface. Let's look at uh, session four. Um, by the way, Sherry and I could talk about like eight strategies we show your child in session three, but let's move on. Um, friendships and de-escalating. It's like, I love session four, um, Sherry Ann, because it's like we've dealt with at that point of the course, um, you, we've helped your child to, to, to have some strategies to handle their emotions, which makes it easier for us in friendship situations because we're always going to be triggered by others in a friendship situation. No one's a perfect friend. So Sherry Ann, what are the friendship things that you love about Secret Agent Society, whether they're from week four or others? I love that we talk about friendships in such a relaxed way. You know, there are different kinds of friendships and um, and we can talk about, you know, what are the levels of friendship? Do we share the same details with everyone? No, we don't. And, you know, my experience is that children can often say, well, you know what, I will tell my best friend absolutely everything in the world. You know, I will hang out with them all the time. And often that best friend is that one friend our kids have got. You know, they love that one friend. And they're the friend that they find the hardest to let go of when somebody else wants to play with them. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. We can have all different levels of friendship. We can have kind of friends, people who we kind of know. We see them around. We know their name. We could hang out with them. We, um, we have friends, people who know a few things about us but not as much as best friends. So we really unpack that for our kids and we talk about it, talk about it with them and, and we pop some names in there because what we're building is a culture where we can start to look and go, well, we're talking about common interests here. What are our friends like that we like? Who else might like the same things as me? So that we're starting to look at how do I make new friends? Yeah, that's good. And and also, because we want everything to be visual, okay? Secret Agent Society is not some conversation. It is very visual. It's very sort of, oh, look, here's, you know, here's a game for this or here's a strategy for that and everything's got pictures. So I'm thinking the picture for the um, friendship levels um, starts from a stranger all the way up to a best friend and all these different categories. And and also the idea that people move across categories over time. So six months ago, Sharon, or nine months ago, I would have said you're an acquaintance, you know, yeah. or whatever word Secret Agent Society uses for that. Um, whereas now I'd say Sharon's acquaintance, friend, good friend. Um, and so I'd put Sharon in the good friend category. You know, she's not my best friend. That would be my wife or my best mate, Craig, but she's a good friend. You know, and and helping our kids see that how I relate to a good friend is different to how I relate to someone who's just in my class. You know, and and a lot of the times that our our, our mums will say to us, "My child doesn't have any friends," it's and and he's getting rejected. Sometimes it's because he's treating kids who he just knows as people in his class as if they're they're super strong friends. And so just to reframe, that's helpful. And then another thing that's so good with this is um, the friendship formula where we actually show kids, how do I choose a friend? Okay, so let's just try something for an example. Okay, Sharon, it's a bit hard because you already know the curriculum. But Sharon, what do you look for in a friend? Okay, say so you want a new friend. What sort of person are you looking for? I am looking for someone who's kind. I'm looking for someone who would like to be outside because I like to be outside. I'm looking for someone who's going to be really honest with me. Um, honesty is something I really value. And usually I look for people who I can have a conversation with because there's something that we can talk about. Um, so for some of, uh, and I'm, all of my friends don't have the same traits, but for some of my friends, that's the fact that we've had kids at the same time other friends it's because we're in the same profession yeah that makes sense so i guess what i'm hearing from you is um if we look at the friendship formula for sherry ann and obviously with your child there's all these visuals and stuff that go with it is that she's looking for someone who wants to go and do things like some of our friends want to do things like play at the oval others of our friends want to chat so she's looking for friends who want to do things and i'm hearing you say that it's important that someone's kind and that they are honest Okay, so to her, that's really important. Um, I, sometimes kids will tell us, and, and our, our kids will rank on a scale of one to five, like what are the most important things you're looking for in a friend? So for Sherry, and I'm hearing you saying kind, honest, fun, whereas other kids will say, oh, what I'm looking for in a friend is someone who doesn't have bad breath. 
you know, and someone who will play my games of handball or whatever. And it's like, so what we're doing there is we're helping your child look for, well, what sort of person could become a good friend of yours? And also, are you looking for a friend to go and do stuff with, or are you looking for a friend who's going to sit and chat with you? Because if you if you know, say, you want a friend who does stuff like Sharanne does, um, I imagine Sharanne, when you were ten and at at school, you'd have been looking for a friend at the Oval. Whereas if if Sharanne was someone who just wanted to chat with people, she might find a friend at the library. It's a very different thing. So we're equipping our kids with what are, what are we looking for in a friend? So we choose um, friends, and we're looking for well how do we go about making more friends like that um so powerful because again once kids have got the formula they're set to go um sherry and i'm also thinking there's a little guy who um who's in one of my groups he started the course and he he and his mum were both so clear zero friends okay so what goes through your head sherry when i say oh welcome week one zero friends like what goes through your head the honest answer I could give you is instant compassion. Yeah. I'm instantly compassionate. That's that's a really tough situation. But there's also hope there yeah. because we, we're breaking down the things that our kids find so hard. Until we start talking about what are you looking for in a friend, how would you go and find a friend, they honestly haven't thought about it. They haven't thought about how do I find a new friend? All they're seeing is I go to school and I I get pushback because I I wonder how many of our kids look for certain groups and they go, oh, that's who I need to hang out with because that's what everyone else is doing. But we're talking about reflecting on, well, what do I actually want? What do I need in a friend? What's really important to me rather than looking at the vast majority? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And so probably like as an adult or especially as a mom or as a dad, it's like we see that child with no friends and we feel that compassion, but then we're lucky because we see kids coming out at the end of secret agent society. And I think like almost none of them have no friends at that point, you know, Um, because how can you not make friends when you now know the the skills? Um, But it's like probably going into the course, maybe 30% of our kids have zero friends, you know? So I think this particular little guy, um, we put him on the course, even though we didn't have a spot for him, we created one because we're like, we're not okay with a little guy waiting three more months having zero friends. And at the end of the course, um, he had had um, two guys come over and have like a play date and both of them had gone reasonably well, you know, like mum had worked very hard to make that, um, to set that up for success and it did. Um, and I know that little guy now, I'm still in, um, still in contact with him. Um, and it's probably a year later and he, he surprises his mum. Like he'll go to the, the, he'll go to like the school fight or whatever, and he'll go and hang out with his friends for like an hour or two and then come back to mum. So that's a lot of progress, but it, it didn't happen because of magic. It came because he built some skills. And it didn't happen overnight, did it? No, my goodness. He did so many. And, and also it didn't happen because the first thing they tried worked. You know, most of the parents that we're working with, they'll try six or seven things before something finally um, gets the result they're looking for. And then let's have a look at um, one of my favourites by a mile, probably my top three. Um, my favourite sessions is session five, which is looking at decisions and negotiation skills. Um, what is it about this this session that you like in particular, Sharon? I love the conversation code. By the way, I love how I put you on the spot there. You're like, I wasn't even thinking anything and then I left to answer a question. You love the conversation code. The conversation code code that comes at the end because we've just broken down what it takes to have a conversation, how to to read people's cues because this is where we're implementing the stuff we've taught in, in week one and two in our sessions. We've taught emotional regulation. Practicing the conversation code is going to take some emotional regulation because it's tricky. It's tricky to remember those rules. We're breaking down what happens if the conversation is going well. What happens if it's not? Because the reality is 50% of the time, our kids are going to be rejected. And it's all about how do I react to that rejection? Because that rejection, rejection is often not a reflection of your child. It's not a reflection of me. I get rejected 50% of the time too. It could be because someone's in a personal conversation you know, that they don't want interrupted. It, there, there are a vast many reasons that they get rejected, but 
what we do with that rejection is important. So we teach our kids what to look for to know if that conversation is not going well, what to look for if it is going well, and what do I do in both of those scenarios. That's right. And and I love that Secret Agent Society equips kids with what to do when they are rejected. Mm. When I'm accepted into a group, here's what I do. When I'm not accepted, here's what I do. So if I walk up to Sherry Ann and she's with like three other kids and I'm like eight years old, I'm like, hey guys, can I join you guys? Um, and they go, no, go away. Then, you know, pre-secret agent society, a child might just explode or run away crying and that that creates mess for future. Or rather, we teach them to go to say, okay, no worries. And then to tell themselves, I'll go and find someone else to hang out with. You know, I have a way forwards. I'm going to go and, and hang out with someone else. So don't mind my alarm just going off. Um, so we, we're showing them what the next step is. And that's what makes it so powerful. And something I love from, say, this this one um, is I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. it's I'll, I love that we teach your child how to negotiate because it's so hard for kids to know um, how to negotiate well. You know, like one of my favorite activities within this is that um, we go, so remember we're in a group of say three kids or four kids. Okay. So say I'm working with three kids and three, and we go, right, let's imagine tonight we're going to go out for dinner. Where are we going to go? You know, what do we want to do for dinner? And, you know, it, you think neurotypical kids might be able to work that out in two minutes, but generally that activity takes about 20, 25 minutes. You know, and it'll be like, Sherry Ann wants chicken nuggets. Why is chicken nuggets the most popular food on earth for our kids? I don't know. Sherry wants chicken nuggets. I, I want to go to, um, I want to get pizza. You know, someone else wants to go and get Italian and someone else wants sushi. And we start with that. It's like, well, how are we going to work out where we're going to go for dinner? And we work it through. By the end of it, we work out that we're going to go, we're going to swing by Macca's to get Sherry and her chicken nuggets and get the kid who wants Macca's Macca's. And then we're going to go off to the pizza place, pick up a pizza, and then we're going to, whatever it was that someone else wanted, and we're going to go back and watch a movie. And we all get what we want, you know? And, and it, it happens because we learned negotiation skills. And there's actually 10 different skills that we teach your child in how they can negotiate. And um, sometimes yeah. too, Michael, we don't get a hundred percent of what we want, do we? And that's okay. And mm. that's okay. And I don't have to explode if I don't get what I want because it doesn't mean I was rejected. <laughs> it just means maybe it's my turn another time, you know, or, or if, or if, if we start out with the idea of, you know, I might want start by wanting pizza, but then someone says, well, what if we don't do that? What if instead we get, I don't know, what's something else we get? Well, we go and have a picnic outside. I'm mm. like, well, that's actually as good as pizza. I can accept that, you know. Um, also, I love sharing with this one. We talk about negotiation, but the truth is once our kids start to use these skills, it's actually manipulation. <laughs> because in the long term, our kids learn that we negotiate for the benefit of everyone. In the short term, it's about what do I want? So I hear a lot of parents after session five saying, He's being very manipulative. And I'm like, yes, that's him using his skills. I'm so happy to hear he's manipulating. Um, what, what, what are you thinking, Sherry, when I say I'm, I'm happy to see kids manipulate <laughs> for the short term? I'm thinking about one in my group who's been, he's been negotiating with me for five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he started with those skills. She's, yeah, she's, um, she comes on and she says, well, how many tokens do I have to get to leave early? <laughs> I love it. She's straight to the point. It's great. She's she's brilliant. And but you know what? She stays and she hangs out and she's developing friendships. Um yeah. Absolutely. And another thing I'm thinking with um with that session around negotiation skills and around um conversation skills is a lot of our kids they don't know how to have a conversation because they don't know how to keep it going. So Sharon. I want you to be the other child. I'll be the, the, the child who's learning to be a secret agent. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done badly. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done well. So like, just come and talk to me and I'm just going to block you at every point. Okay, go for it. Yeah, no worries. Hey, did you see the latest Sonic movie? Mm, no, no, I didn't. Oh, what movie have you watched recently? Um, Not many. I've just been playing Minecraft. Oh, what's your favorite thing to build in Minecraft? Hmm. 
actually at this point you'd probably unleash uh three paragraphs you know for a lot of our kids and and that's that's how they do conversation sometimes but um if i was blocking i'd be like oh i just i'm good at everything i just build everything and and so like we we want our kids to see that's not a conversation a conversation is is more like a game of tennis where the ball's going backwards and forwards each side of the net so um sharon can you um can let's redo that conversation from scratch okay go for it um have you seen the latest sonic movie um, no, I haven't seen the latest Sonic movie. Um, and then we teach our kids to be like, if she's talking about Sonic, she must like Sonic. I haven't seen the latest Sonic movie. No. Um, have you seen it? Yeah, I watched it on the weekend with my family. It was so good. I really liked Tails. Okay. And then we teach our kids to pick up on something she said that we can then ask a follow-up question to. You really like Tails. What's Tails? I, I don't know what Tails is. Tails is one of the characters in the movie. His, his um his tail flies so it helps him to fly up in the air have you ever been flying i haven't been i haven't been and and so again like we're teaching our kids you go back and forward and so the idea is i don't want to hog the conversation i don't want to steal it and make it all about me telling 300 words about minecraft but i also don't want to be just blocking things with yes no answers and that's a hard skill but you add the fact they're learning that with us um with the fact that mum or dad is equipped with here's what we've been covering here are some ways you can practice that at home and you end up with with a lot of um a lot of baby steps that lead up to progress let's have a look at our session six now sharon um that's this one <coughs> excuse me what do you love about session six I love that it piggybacks on session five. So in session six, we start by looking at the play code and the first three or four steps in the play code are the same as the conversation code. So it's not an extra thing to remember, um, which is really great because we can sort of check um, the level of understanding too, so that we can best support our kids yeah. as we progress. Yeah. And, and the secret agent society is like that. It's not like, hi, here's some content, go and learn it. <laughs> it's no. like, no, this is a game. This is an ongoing game. You're a secret agent, you know, like all these skills that they tie in with each other. And even as we're looking at, um, at, am I accepted into the group? If I go into a group or am I not, they're using the skills I learned way back in session one of reading people's faces and reading their voices and stuff like that. Um, let me just share my screen again, Sharon. Um, what goes through your head when you see these? Because I think, oh, there's so so many good skills that we want our kids to have. Um, that that when we're not born knowing how to how to play well, you know, what goes through your head when I say we literally break it down and that's how we win? We're we're just disarming the things that our kids didn't know. We're we're chunking it up. We're teaching them. we we're, we're also honing on in on some things that might not be easy but we're explaining to children why is it okay for people to say yes or no why do we need to let other people have a turn first and and even in that we're manipulating the situation a little bit aren't we where we're teaching them well if we let other people have a turn first they actually might like me more because i've shown kindness by doing that so um so that's really fun that's really good. And it's like things like clinginess, you know, often the teacher will say, and um, oh, Sharon and I have both been teachers, like between us, we've got like 35 years of teaching experience. It's like, well, teachers will say to their, their students, oh, you're being clingy. And, and the, the kids are like, what's that even mean? What do I need to do to not be clingy? Like, what are you talking about? It's not my fault anyway, it's their fault. You know, and, and so if we can break it down into a social formula and make it easier to understand, um, we, we win the game. Well, things like when the teacher says, stop being the rules police. Our kids need to know, well, what is the rules police? Like, you can't just throw words around. You actually need to explain the formula. Um, it's because our kids often root are often are rule followers too. They like logical thinking. They like to think about things in step by step by step. Often our kids are maths. They love maths because it's so logical. Everything, so there's a reason for everything. And what we're doing when we're giving these steps, we're also giving a reason that they're important, the reason that we need to be doing them. And they can relate to that. 
That's right. And let's be honest, if you've met one child with autism, you've met one child with autism. Yeah. Okay. Every child is, is completely different, but there are patterns and most of the kids that we work for want the formulas. Okay. They want to know what are these social rules that are eluding me. And then session seven, let's have a look at that one. Oh, I love, I love session seven. Um, what do you like? What do you love about session seven? First, by the way, it's your end. I'm using my, what's the, um, I'm using the social skill of letting someone else go first. Sharon, what oh, do you love about session you, seven? Um, I love that we're teaching about the importance of sorry um, and how to fix a friendship that might have gone awry because that happens. That's reality. Every single friendship we have has conflict sometimes. We have disagreements. We have difference of opinion. So we're teaching and we all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. So we're teaching our kids what what are the options you have if you've made a mistake or if something has happened how do we fix that what do we need to do which is really good um i also really love if we come down a little bit michael that we also talk about the difference between playful joking and actual bullying because sometimes we've got some um oh sorry actual teasing um not bullying, sorry. You just muted, Michael. How good is that? <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, <laughs> thank you for helping me out. That's um, okay. So with what Sherianne's saying, it's like, there's, there's actually three options. If Sherianne says something mean to me, like, Sherianne, can you say something to me about, say, my glasses, that this time you're not being mean, you're just making a comment. Okay, go for it. Um, your glasses are really square. Yeah. And if, if I'm like a lot of the kids we work for, I won't know how to take that. So is that, is she joking with me or is she teasing or did she just accidentally say something that my feelings would now be hurt if, if they were. And so we look at that and, and this, again, it's a social formula. It's like, well, what's the strength of the relationship? Is she normally nice to me or is she normally mean to me? Because if she's normally mean to me, well, I can assume she's being mean. If she's normally nice to me, and if she's my friend, the next step in that formula is I can say to her, you know, Sharon, just checking, are you like, are you having a crack at me about my glasses or are you just like making a comment? And then if you're my friend, Sharon, what would you say? Oh, no, I just noticed them today and I just thought I'd make a comment. Yeah. And, and so... And basically she backed down from what she'd said. Whereas if she was trying to be mean to me and I said that to her, she's going to keep going. And so our kids can know what to do. And I guess that brings us to, to the next um, session, which is session eight, which is how do we handle bullying? And i got to be honest, this is so like so important because how many kids who have autism haven't been subjected to a lot of bullying over the years? Okay. So, um, Sharon, what, what jumps out at you about this session and about the sort of things that we, we help kids with on this? It's the number of options we give for dealing with bullying. There are so many things that we can do that isolated, they're all powerful. When we're able to put them together, they're like super powerful. Now, the number one thing we always say with bullying um, or with something that we think might be bullying is we need to record it. It's really important you write it down so that you can see, is it happening? Because the first thing to understanding bullying is bullying is repeated acts of nasty deeds. So it's not just, usually it's not just a once-off thing. It's if it keeps happening. And when we write that down, we can start to make a pattern um, for our adults That's who right. are going to help us sort that out. But as a child, what I can do is I can go, you know what? I'm going to act like it's not affecting me. I'm going to say, no worries. Is that the best you've got? We're going to use a clever comeback. And we're going to walk away looking confidently because 99% of the time that's going to sort the bullying out. Yeah, that's quality. So I guess what you're saying there, Sharon, is building on last session of, um, of <laughs> I just keep coughing. What's wrong with me? What am I, what's in my coffee? Um, so of looking at, hold on, what's the motive behind it? What's the intent? We also, um, we also look, 
this session stops kids from viewing themselves as victims because our kids are not victims. And what you said about a clever comeback, the magic word is whatever. Okay. So let's imagine Sharon's teasing me about my glasses. What is with my glasses today, Sharon? You're going to tease me about my glasses. And then I'm going to use the formula, which is to look you in the eye and say, whatever, and then walk away. Okay. Let, let, let's, and let's just see what the impact of that is, Sharon. Okay. Go for it. Like really have a crack at my glasses. So it's clear that you're having a go at me. Ah, oh, four eyes. Mate, when did you get those? Whatever. So you can see how that would just instantly, it looks like he didn't care. Instantly he's walking away and I'm left like, oh, that's really confusing because right. he acted like he didn't care. And you didn't get the social benefit that the bully is looking for. And we actually show kids that. We show them what the bully is looking for. And what that does, it shows our kids it's not about them anyway. It's about the bully trying to get something out of it. And then we give our kids the specifics of, well, how do I handle bullying? And obviously, we're secret agents. Here's how a secret agent handles bullying. So you've got your clever comeback, which the safest clever comeback is whatever. You don't want this child engaging with the like verbal judo with, with the bully. They will not win. Don't, don't do that. That won't work. We've got the fact that we disengage and head for cover, which is what, what, what I just did. Now, most of the kids who Cheran and I help, they're going to disengage, head for cover, just hope they make 20 or 30 steps and then they'll lose it. And that's fine. But they didn't give the bully what they needed. Um, you talked before about the collecting evidence thing. Um, but the the magic too of these would, would oh, and there's the stay close to friends and away from enemies, you know, this whole superhero mm, thing. Stay in a group. Stay in the group. That's right. And and the brave face mask. When Cherian had a crack at my glasses, I didn't, I didn't lose the plot out. I didn't explode in anger. I didn't explode in... Um, in like like tears, I was just I used my brave face mask that I needed for that moment. Um, I can let that face mask off after I've walked away. And the cruel comments, deflector shield. It's like words that are thrown at me. They're only words, but they're not going to hurt me because I've got my cruel comments, deflector shield that I can fend them off with. Um, so I mean, that's a bit more in depth. Like this is the stuff that we send out to um to to the teachers and parents. But long story short such an such a helpful session now session eight's helpful because like you said before it builds on these other skills that, that we've already been using you know um powerful and then and then session nine what jumps out at you about session nine session nine's a hard one for, for us as leaders it's good for your kids it's a hard one for us as leaders session nine being around how do i handle surprises especially surprises that don't suit me sharon what goes through your head about that session it's recognizing that it's tricky. You know, I had a little guy in my class about six years ago. Back when you were a teacher or do you mean? Back when I was teaching. Yep, yep. I was teaching grade three and I had this little guy. He wasn't diagnosed with autism, but every single day at 10.15, if I had not done brain break, it was like, uh, where's our brain break? What are you doing? Why have you made this change? This change is, what's going on here? And you could see the anxiety growing and that's what it is. Anxiety grows when when there's a change or when there's something, and it, it's a really instant thing, um, instant anxiety. And so <clears throat> we're teaching our kids, we can stay calm in those situations. It's what we do with those that matters. Yeah, that's good. And, and also... I mean, obviously, Secret Agent Society, we turn this into a game. It's like, okay, let's imagine that Sherry Ann and her husband and myself and my wife and kids, we're all going on a camping trip and we get to our destination and we've traveled all day and we forgot our tent. What then? And then and, and then we look at, well, you know, like, how are we going to change this and, and how we handle that? You know, how do I not get mad at people just because things didn't go the way I wanted or the way I expected? And, and it's all in scenarios. Um, and How do I keep my thinking brain on so yeah. that I can decode and solve this problem? That's right. And which strategies will I use to stay calm? Yeah. You know, will I use my unhelpful thought zapper? Will I use my oxygen regulator? Like, what, what am I going to use? You know, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's helpful. But we, we got it. We need to be real that, um, your child is not going to finish this course and then suddenly go, right, doesn't matter what goes wrong. I can handle it. 
you know, I don't need a brain break at 10, 15. It can happen at 10, 20 and I'm fine. It's, it's not like it's, it's instant, but it, it's, it's little and often. It's these little exposures to ideas and it's mum and dad reinforcing it. It's your school teacher reinforcing it. We send info to your child's teacher. We send info to your child's psych, their OT, their speechy, anyone you need. We just get them the info. Here's what your child's learning. Here's some feedback on it. Um, and then that's the end of session nine. And then there's actually a, um, there's a, there's a pause on the program for about, about two and a half months where your child's just going out and being a secret agent. They're not doing the sessions at this point. They're being a secret agent. And then we have a 10th session where we look at how we're going with using our skills, you know, because the reality is that secret agent society might teach 50 different skills, but at that point of the course, your child might be using say 15 of them regularly. So we want to praise the 15 that are being used and then the, the skills that are being, being left on the shelf, you know, like the, it's an opportunity that, that to grow. Um, we reinforce them and then we it wide another. It gives the opportunity for, you know, sometimes parents get overwhelmed. Sometimes it's just, what can I focus on? Like we've given 90 minutes of our time each week. We're getting a lot out of it, but there are some things that we need to work on and we know we need to, but we just don't know how to fit that in. That break is when you can say, you know what, well, in that 90 minutes, we're going to keep going, but we're going to pick a skill and we're really going to master it and we're going to work together to see how we go with mastering that skill. And then what we see is really good growth because they've had extra time to practice, haven't they? Absolutely. You know, and, and if, if we, instead of doing the way we do of nine weeks in a row and then a break and then a 10th mm. session and then another break and then 11th, if you just put all into one thing, you've got this situation where, you're not giving time for skills to fade so they can be put back in because skills are going to fade and that's fine. But then we want to want to focus on that as well. So it's, it's a very powerful course in that way. There's also um, what we haven't shown here is the parent sessions. We, we have four sessions where we, we train mum or we train dad or dad and mum, and, and we show you guys, here's what your child's learning. Here's how you use it. So for example, um, when you're looking at say, say let's go back to the bullying um session seven or eight um session then what 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 we do is we we show you as parents you know what that week watch a movie or something that has some bullying in it and have a look at how the character in the movie responded and what would have been a better way you know even like say star wars you know han solo always hassling luke skywalker in the early days and and how should luke be responding you know what what is what what are some things you could do? What did we learn this week at Secret Agent Society that he forgot? You know, so that's the parent sessions are super powerful. Um, Sharon, what do you enjoy most about the parent sessions? Or better question, what do you feel like the parents enjoy most about the parent sessions? I love that nothing is a secret. Nothing we're doing is a secret. We are, our one, our number one goal is to train you to do what we do. It's like nothing's, and our, our parents get so much benefit when they attend those sessions. Often session one in particular, like parents are a bit anxious because they don't know what's coming. But by the end of session one, they're feeling really, really relaxed. And then session two, they come ready to learn and they're excited about learning. And we just build that excitement. Um, and, you know, there's excitement, but does that mean that every single parent is getting 100% success? No. Sometimes parents are still struggling with things, but they know that they've got a place they can come to and they can say, how do I make this work? What can I do to support our, my child? And we can, we can help with that. Absolutely. And it's a refreshing thing when parents realize I'm not the only one whose child is, is, mm. is struggling with this. Um, the statistics are that it's about 85% of the kids that we work with are going to um, have long lasting much healthier relationships and emotional regulation as measured a year later. So that's 85%. And then the other 15% of kids, um, they will have got some benefits, but it just might not be described as like that impacting. But I mean, that's a pretty, um, that's a pretty high rate of impact for kids. And so early on in the sessions, parents are often very sort of hopeful. I hope this has an impact, you know, and, and it's like they've tried a number of things before, may or may not have helped. But it's like, it actually takes a whole village to raise a child, you know? Mm. So that's why we're working with, you know, we're getting information and feedback out to your child's teacher, your child's OT, you know? Um, and, and the reality is that um, a lot of what we do doesn't work the first time. So we might, like, we're, we're very um, 
very deliberate about having parents like text us and let us know, look, my child's going to, ha- he's had a massive meltdown at school. I don't know how he'll go. We're like, oh, that's okay. Get him to bring his dog with him at the start of the session. We'll talk about dogs for a while. You know, like, and basically if things don't work the first time, we'll find a way around them. Um, that's our commitment. Like we're, we're here to help kids. We're not here to deliver a program. We're here to help kids. The program's just a tool. Um, Sherry, what's going through your head? What's, if there was one thing that we haven't covered today that you think is important for parents to know about this course, what would it be? That's a great question. She's like, oh, there's 10 things. But if, if there was one thing, like I can't even think of what one particular thing would be, what, what can you imagine? I'm, not, I'm actually not sure. That's all right. We've covered but a lot. <laughs> we have, haven't we? I reckon if, if there was only one thing that I think we would wrap up with, it would be, um, it would be that. Good news. Yeah, some good news. Let's often do that. Often our kids, often our kids come and they're actually quite deflated because how often do they sit in a classroom and something's too hard and the teachers actually run off their feet and they, they haven't gotten to helping your child yet or they have had a social situation and they feel like a victim but they feel like they're being portrayed as a bully. You know, they feel like they're not getting the encouragement. Our goal is actually to try and spin that around a little bit. And at the end of every session, we will send some good news, some things that your child has done well, some things that your child has learned about and been working on. And that is just, it's so much fun for leaders and it is so much fun for you guys because, you know, you get to hear something positive. Absolutely. Um, And I hear parents, we are, and I hear parents saying so often, oh, I never get anything positive out of my school. Well, here is where you're going to get something positive. We're all about um, sending out some positivity. Absolutely. And I mean, I know that this sounds a bit crazy, but it's just what we do. At the end of every single session, we will either have told the parent like um, right there and then praise their child in front of um in front of them because that's very powerful or we'll um if mum's not around or dad's not around we'll send a text message and be like hey here's what here's what aaron did really well today so that then mum or dad can be like hey aaron i just got a text message it says and they can read it out you know because we're here to build confidence we're here to create some good news so you might be getting a lot of bad news from school you know your your child just hit someone or a lot life didn't go to plan somehow um but Every week, there's something good that you can you can say to your child. So yeah, we're here to build kids up. We're not here to deliver a program. The program is the tool. We're here to help your child realize that they are a champion and that and give them skills so they can go and be that champion. All right. Well, cool. Thanks for hanging out, Tran. Um, I hope Thanks parents for got what me. they need. You're so welcome. And parents, if you want to book your child in for this course, look, it is just so helpful. There's so many places in Australia that will do this course. Um, a lot of them, there's a bit of a waiting list. So just keep fo- looking until you find somewhere without a waiting list. I know that Sharon and I and our team, our waiting list is like six weeks or something at the moment. Um, it's very short, but if we can help you, amazingskills.com.au, get in touch and ask for Sharon or Michael. We'll, we'll be happy to help.